Hey folks, Ken here and uh, just going through a uh, AMD Ryzen Threadripper build. Um, I found quite a few videos on the internet just kind of talking about the CPU and, and some performance things and just some general uh, information about it. But I hadn't actually seen anybody, well there's a couple uh, folks that were building stuff. I hadn't actually seen anyone that was building out the, uh, the Intermax, so the, uh, the cooler, the liquid cooler for the Ryzen chipset. I saw some folks doing it on a bench, but I hadn't seen anybody sticking it into a case. Um, and I ran into some issues with that. I actually bought a case, an Intermax case. So it's the, uh, this is the case here. The Ostrog case. Maybe it's not from Intermax, I'm not sure. But I bought it because I saw this little spot up on the top here. And I thought, I'll put a link for the case, just so you don't buy that. This case, uh, maybe you can if you want. Um, for this particular CPU and motherboard combination. But what ended up happening was they got this nice spot up here that I thought, hey, I'll put the, uh, the cooler, the, you know, this part down here, the Intermax thing. I thought I would uh, be able to put that right up here. And turns out, if you look at the motherboard, so it's hard to tell with the camera right here, but there's a little heat sink thing right here. And that actually sits up too high, and so you can't mount can see there's like hardly any clearance right there. What I ended up doing was I have a bunch of cases and stuff, so I mounted another fan up here that I still need to plug in. Um, so just to, just to have some 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 additional uh, airflow out of the case from the top. Although I haven't run any problems, I'll sh I've got a, some screenshots here of some things that I've done. Th this particular case it came with this fan in the back, and then um, I opted for this uh, Supernova the 850 watt. Um, that's actually from the same company as that makes the uh, the EVGA, which makes the GeForce GTX 1080, which is what I put in uh, as well. So the case is pretty tight. What I ended up having to do in this particular case was there were two trays right here for drives, and I ended up having to just take that out, and then this actually fit pretty nice. As far as installing the Intermax, it was actually really super simple uh, to do. Um, and I didn't have any problems other than just getting the screws in, which isn't a, it's not a, there's nothing that you can really do. It's not, definitely not a, a the, the uh, Intermax issue, but just getting the screw, just getting this thing to mount up is just kind of a pain. The screws actually don't have a lot of thread once they get through the, uh, through the, to the hole right here. So trying to mount it up and get it all flush and everything is kind of a pain. Once you get a couple screws in, it actually works out to be pretty nice. Um, the other thing that I did on this, and I've got some benchmarks here as well too, but the other things that I did on this was I put the, uh, the 960 EVO Samsung uh, drive in. Um, so this particular motherboard here, which is the, uh, it's the AS Rock X399 board, um, has three slots. So you can see there's one slot there and then there's another slot to the left of that. Uh, I put 32 gig of memory in. Um, I put my DVD drive in up here. I'm actually going to replace. I've got a just a storage drive here that I'm using, and I just have this kind of laying in here for now. Um, I'm actually going to replace that with a three terabyte drive that I just have for some storage. And then I've got a couple drives that are laying on the ground right here because I took the tray out. So um, this is a this is a like a 10,000 RPM a Seagate Velociraptor drive, and this is an Intel SSD drive over here. Um, so overall, uh, the build went really well. I plugged everything in. It was one of those that everything turned on uh, and worked fine from the very first uh, you know time I booted it, uh, which was nice. And um, you know that doesn't happen all that often, but everything worked perfectly. Um, again, no surprises. Really pretty straightforward, easy build. Again, the one thing you need to be aware of with this X399 up at the top is that there's not going to be a whole lot of clearance with an ATX case if you want to try to mount a fan uh, up on the top here. So it's kind of, again, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, you can see how close that is. You don't have any clearance right there. There's only, you know, like, you know, I don't know what that is right there. It's not very much clearance at all, half an inch or so. And then this thing, again, it sits up really high. So trying to get a fan up in the top of this case, in any case really, is probably going to be uh, be a little bit of a big, be a little bit of an issue. The card fits fine, even with the even with the case over here, even with the fan over here. The card has plenty of clearance and fits fine. 
and again, haven't had any issues. Um, I'm going to go and share uh, my desktop here a little bit and show you some of the benchmarks and things like that that I've done. Uh, been really happy with uh, with this build so far. So let's switch over there. All right, everybody over here to the desktop. Um, just a couple things I wanted to show. First off, I did uh, I use this tool called AS SSD Benchmark. Um, and I have three different types of drives. The first one is that 960 EVO drive. Um, the second one is an Intel SSD drive. I think it's the 335 series. So right now it's a 240 gig drive. Right now I just looked it up. It's about $140 uh, SSD drive. So, so pretty decent performance when I bought it. Uh, several years ago, it was, you know, for a consumer, uh, it, was, it was a pretty good drive. And then the last one here, I didn't even let it finish because it was taking so long, but it's a 10,000, it's a, a Western Digital um, 10,000 RPM drive. And you can see just the, the difference and you can look at it from a score perspective down here, a total of 1123 compared to 62 for the 10,000 RPM drive. And then you can just see some, some kind of relative information around where the, where the drives stack up, at least with regards to, to that particular tool. Um, over here on with the with the per performance monitor um, or the hardware monitor here for the CPU, I did a, I use Prime 95. So you can see in the left hand column here, this is the current value. So right now it's running about 31 degrees, which I think is about maybe 88, 89 degrees Fahrenheit. And then the uh, the top temperatures, I ran at Prime 95 and it ran for about an hour. Uh, while I was doing some other stuff. And so the highest, it kind of bounced between 46 and 46 and a half. That was, a, that was the highest that it got. Uh, and you can see down here for all the cores, we maxed all the cores out, all 32 um, threads, actually 16 cores in here, 32 threads out at hundred percent. And we had one fan, I'm not sure which one of those fans, maybe this is a CPU fan, what got to hundred percent at one point. Uh, the rest of them stayed at about 65%. This is wrong. I don't know what this shows is 20,000 RPM, 19,000 RPM on this particular fan. Uh, actually, it's not. It can be the CPU fan because there is no fan on the CPU. So it's probably maybe one of the fans on the on the Intermax, the cooler or something. I'm not sure exactly which fan it is. But the main point here was that I have not overclocked this thing at all. Uh, it's stock. Um, I haven't done anything to the memory. I haven't done anything to the CPU, anything to the GPU. The GPU actually comes at 1080. Um, FTW actually comes overclocked. But just to give you a sense of the temperatures and things with regards to the Intermax just on a stock um, system, I did a Cinebench as well. Um, and so for, again, with completely stock configuration, 94.68 frames, frames per second. And you can see from, if I go over to the OpenGL here, there's some comparative uh, information. Um, and you can see here just some of the, I'm not sure exactly what, I don't think it really matters here, but uh, anyway, there's a, a few other things here just from, um, this is pretty cool. It's got some comparison stuff here. So this shows a rendering of, I don't know if this is pulling from their database, if this stuff gets uploaded or whatever, but you can see from an OpenGL perspective, 94.8 frames per second um, compared to some other systems. And then, uh, from a CPU perspective, uh, this thing is just kind of off the charts here. Um, so pretty cool stuff. Anyway, I just wanted to show this uh, for kind of a, uh, a stock build. Um, just uh, hopefully this was helpful to folks that are looking to build out uh, a Ryzen system and um, have fun.